As believers in Jesus Christ, we've been called out from the world and into His light. Paul told the Ephesians, Walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you've been called, with humility and gentleness, patience and love for one another. That is the first calling we are to fulfill. But then there is the more specific calling of living out what God has planned for your life. How are you to serve Him? Where are you to work? What role does God have for you in His church? Well, I certainly was able to identify with these questions when I first came to faith in the Lord. But what I've learned is this. God will not keep secret what He wants you to do. And let me give you an example. I was saved when I was 12 years of age. When I was 14, I knew that the Lord had called me to preach. I knew nothing beyond that. I didn't know anything about the education. I didn't know what would be required of me. I just knew that He called me to preach the gospel. And so it was from that experience of knowing that you say, well, how did you know? Little by little, God began to move my interest in that area. And I would go to church and I always sat up close, listening very carefully. I wasn't listening to plan how I would preach. I was just listening for God to speak to me. And so little by little, that strong feeling of desiring to preach began to work in my life until finally I knew without a shadow of a doubt it was the will of God for my life. He'll make it plain to you if your heart's right. Today's email centers on this issue of calling, and the email reads, I have been working without church youth group. Time after time, God has called me into the ministry, and I've ignored Him. I want to make sure I'm hearing His calling and not my self-ambition or guilt. Can you help? Well, let me ask you a question. First of all, why did you ignore Him? You need to think about that. Why did you ignore one of the most awesome opportunities in the world for God to call you to serve Him. Whatever that is, you need to deal with it. You need to confess it and to repent of it and to ask God to forgive you for moving in a direction that was totally opposite from His will and purpose and plan for your life. You see, when He calls you, He always calls you with a promise. God's full of wonderful promises. For example, He says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. And He says in Psalm 32, He will guide you with His eye upon you. And in 1 John 5, 14, 15, this is the confidence. Listen to that. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, we know that we have the petition and the answer that we're looking for. Now, it is the will of God to reveal His will to you. No question. The first step is a clean heart. You must ask God to cleanse your heart and to be sure that your life is right with Him. And the second step is to surrender your will to Him, whatever He calls you to do. For me personally, it was the call to preach the gospel. For you, it may be something else. The issue is this. He does give callings, and He does guide us, and He directs us, and He also increases our interest in that calling gradually. Now, once in a while, somebody will say, well, it just hit me all of a sudden. Well, maybe it does, maybe it does not for you. The issue here in your question is, um, can I help you? I can help you by simply answering this question. Are you willing to do whatever God calls you to do? You have to answer that. Secondly, is there anything that pops up in your mind when I mention the fact of being willing to do anything? Have you laid out your desires for God and said, Lord, now you need to call me in one of these areas. If you want clear direction, you must have a clean heart and you must have an open mind and a surrendered will. God, whatever you want is what I want. Now, if there are doubts, identify them. For example, let's say he called you to preach and you said, well, Lord, I can't go to school. But when he called me, I had no money and my mother could not help me. And so I had to deal with those things. But you only deal with them as they come forth. And God will enable you. And remember this. He will never call you to do anything that you cannot do. Your ability, your skills, all of that is a gift from God. He equips us for His calling. We don't even realize we're equipped 
until we begin to exercise that. When you begin to move in the direction that He's calling you, those desires become stronger and stronger. When you begin to move in the wrong direction, you get uneasy. There's a check in your spirit. You're unhappy with yourself. You feel distant from God. That's why when He calls you, the wisest thing you can do is to say yes. The Word of God is a key. Getting into the Word of God keeps you focused upon Him. And oftentimes it's in a passage of Scripture that He'll give you clear direction. He does not give us all the answers we'd like to have when He calls us. We may not even see how it's possible for us to do what He wants us to do or even why. But as we obey Him, each step becomes clearer. Finally, there is an absolute perfect peace. That a calling may appear to be very difficult for you at this particular time. But when you begin to obey Him, it's like He eliminates one inhibition, he eliminates one fear, he eliminates one question, one doubt, until finally the Spirit of God has so confirmed in your heart exactly what he wants you to do. Now, when he does, listen, there will be a, pre- there will be a peace that prevails over all your questions and doubts. But will Satan attack? Yes, he will. And he will remind you that you're not worthy of it. Why do you think God would call you? All of those things. But remember this. You don't listen to that. You listen to the Spirit of God within you who has made and is making that calling very clear. And let me say this. If you don't fulfill His calling, you're going to be miserable all of your life. Let me tell you why. I used to teach in a Bible institute. Most of the pastors there had been called early in life, maybe like you. But they had all said no for one reason or the other. And then later on in life, They finally surrendered to God. But without a doubt, those men would say to me, you know, I look at all those years I wasted because I refused to be obedient to God. I regret that. And I could feel in their heart their attempts to somehow figure out some way they can make up for that. You can't make up for it. That's why it's so absolutely essential. You surrender your life to God. Yield yourself to Him. Lord, whatever you want, and move in that direction and trust Him to take care of you. Well, thank you for joining us today for In Touch. God promises in Psalm 32 that He will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. He will counsel you with His eye upon you. And if necessary, He will move heaven and earth to show you His will for your life.